Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're doing a beginner's guide for Black Clover Mobile. Now, I'll leave timestamps in the description so you guys can bounce around. And what I'm going to go through in this video is going to be all the basics so you guys understand everything that should be going on in the game as you play through your first few days to a week or so. More of the advanced features we'll do future videos on and stuff like that. But this one is to get you pointed in the right direction so you don't get lost. So first of all, what we're going to talk about is what to actually do in the game. The main thing you're going to find is up in the top left top right here sorry we have this is our main quest log and basically if you're feeling lost you're not sure what you should be doing you want to be progressing through this you can just click it it will take you to wherever you are up to on your account in the main campaign and it will get you there now if you're either stuck on the main campaign uh, or any didn't want to actually get into that uh let's bounce out let's bounce out but if you're if you're if you're feeling stuck like you can't defeat these stages or you've completed all of the campaign to where you can go to then you can go into challenge now challenge is where you're going to be able to power up your characters now the main ones early on that you're going to be farming for is going to be mage xp to level up your your mages uh bond experience because bond is very important when we look at character progression in a minute and then the other one is going to be the dungeon for gear and and those are going to be the main three that you're going to be farming early on. Now, when we go to our gear enhancement materials and our talent seeds, uh, which is the one behind my head right here, um, when we look at those ones, those are a bit later on. Those aren't going to be in your first few days of play. Uh, maybe for some people, if you go really hard, but in general, the main three that you're going to be looking at early days is going to be Mage XP, Bond XP, and Gear. So just keep that in mind. If you're feeling stuck, go there, try and grind some stuff. XP is really self-explanatory. It's going to level up your characters, make them stronger. Gear, same thing. You equip gear, you get stronger, stuff like that. Uh, but we'll go into bond XP in a minute. But that is basically the main things you're going to want to be looking at doing in the game uh, if you're feeling lost and stuff like that. You progress through the campaign or you burn your stamina. Now, the other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to overcap your stamina. Obviously, I haven't played on this account in a while, so that that's why I'm incredibly overcapped. The other thing we want to look at is the Mage's Path. Now, this is something you unlock fairly early on and it has a bunch of different missions that you have to complete just note that you don't want to um, leave this thing behind always check back to it see if there's a mission if it's a simple mission that you can do do it because if say the next mission is like clear x amount of this stage or something like that it doesn't retroactively count for everything some things are retroactively counted if it's like things you can only do once or something like that but a lot of things you got to keep doing it as you go so the major's path gives you good rewards and you just want to keep on top of it if you can, if there are simple things that you can clear. So that is the other thing that you really want to keep on top of as well. Next, I want to look at the character progression. Now, obviously we have levels. Like I said, you can farm for experience. You can level the characters up and they will hit their level caps. Now I'm going to do a fresh character just so I can demonstrate this stuff. Uh, but once you hit the level cap for their current rank, then you're going to have to rank them up. And as you can see here, you're going to have to use these pieces to rank them up. I'm going to need four. I only have three at the moment for the rare ones, but if you're doing a um, SR character, they're going to need uh, the SR ones. If you're doing an SSR, they're going to need SSR ones of these. Now, there are different places to get these. You will get a lot given to you in the early game just through progression. So that's where your early income of these is going to be. And that's how you're going to rank up your characters. So you've got level up, you've got rank up. Now, as we move past that, the other progression systems that we have is going to be gear. And the gearing system is a bit funny. I'm not going to do full gear, guys in this one but I'll jump over to one of my other characters to show you what gear does and as you upgrade your character you're going to unlock more slots for gear and then you're going to have different pieces of gear that some have uh, magic attacks some have normal attacks some have HP defense there's a whole structure to it I'm not going to go deep into it but gearing is a way to upgrade your characters as well um, there's different set bonuses and stuff like that but the, honestly to go into this it's going to be a whole guide on itself early on just equip something that looks like the stats if you've got a physical damage dealer Put, put some attack on them. If you've got a magic damage dealer, put some magic attack on them. If you've got a tank, put some defense on them. It's pretty straightforward uh, in that sense, but I will go into a much more in-depth video in the future on gearing. Now, the next thing that we do have is enhancements. Uh, so if we go over here, this is where you get your dupes of your characters to get some additional upgrades. Now, you can also get items that act as uh, 
you know, uh, substitute dupes. Dude, I couldn't think of the word just then. But you can get dupes of a character or you can get the substitute dupes, uh, which are then going to enhance, give them an extra star essentially. And this is your duping mechanism. So with the universal ones that you can use as a substitute for any character, you really want to save them for characters in the future that are going to be really important. Some of the seasonal characters and stuff like that. Um, and that's how we're going to get the extra enhancements you can view all the different enhancements by clicking here you see this one's going to give us an extra passive this one's going to give us the extra passive as well and then these ones are going to increase stats you can see this one here gives me the extra crit rate so on and so forth that is the duping system now obviously you're not going to get as much as that with your ssr units uh your srs are going to be more prevalent now the other thing that i want to mention is you can see that these are lrs any rarity character can get upgraded to lr but you when i talk about rs srs ssrs it's on their on their base level that they start as and as you can see the sr characters here when they are lr they are still that silver appearance for being sr units so you can always identify them now the next thing we have is talents uh and talents these are a bit further on in the game when you start going deep into these and that's why i said with the farming you're not really going to be looking at these too early but these are going to give you some extra stats that will help your characters and these will be a good power spike progression later on in the game but in the early game you don't really have to stress too much about it now the next one i wanted to look at is bond because bond is very important and i mentioned early on that you will start farming bond and if we go to the rewards list here you can see that at bond level one we we get the conditions met to go to ssr on this character so if you want to upgrade those characters and continually limit break them you will need to upgrade their bonding but as you can see as we progress this bond we will get some of the uh shard pieces uh that you need to actually upgrade and limit break your characters which is fantastic we get some other things then we hit bond level six which unlocks the conditions to be able to you are our character which i believe is level uh 60 or 80 whatever it is uh and then you've got lr condition at bond level 10 so bond level 10 is going to be a very important one for characters that you really want to build and bond level 10 is the key one you want to get them to so that you can unlock their lr conditions for that limit break uh anything past that is just bonus uh, premium currency and doesn't really matter too much but those are going to be the main levels the one other thing that i uh, missed over here is going to be your skill pages now skill pages you will see these obviously tons when you summon uh, and you'll get different ones for specific characters and stuff like that. I don't really have good skill pages on this account. So that is why we're using some pretty average ones. But just note that skill pages are definitely another thing that will upgrade your character. And I'll go more in depth into skill pages again in another video. So now that we've gone through character progression, I wanted to go through combat and combat starts before we get into the battle. Obviously it starts with your team and we'll talk about uh, team up abilities and stuff like that once we get into combat, but we do have skill presets that we can activate. Um, as you can see here, you can see use skill one on the first turn, which is your basic attack. And for here, for Charmy, you can see that I've got her only using her skill. She never uses her ultimate or her combined attack because her skill is a heal and then her basic attack has a chance to heal if she crits. So uh, basically, you can you can customize your characters on how you want them to work. Uh, if we look at my Lotus, he's going to use his ultimate as first priority, and he's going to use his skill as second priority. And then obviously, when none of those are available, he will use his basic attack until one of these becomes available. If they both became available at the same time, then he will use his ultimate as priority. That's basically the way it works, uh, and hopefully that makes some sense there. So this is the auto combat that you can set. Now, we also have the auto button. When you activate this auto button, button down the bottom it means when you jump into combat it will start it on autoplay otherwise you can turn it off and it won't start on autoplay it'll start on manual and then we have this times three this is more for when you've cleared something and you're farming it uh, it's going to give you like a times three so when it's going to use three times the stamina uh, and it's also going to give you three times the reward so if you see here i'm at 14 stamina i click times three it's 42 stamina but it's just a good way to burn your stamina faster and basically three times speed the gear grind uh, or the anything grind that you're trying to do now the other thing that we do have is food now you're going to be using different food in different situations if you're farming for yule you're going to use the yule food if you're farming for mage xp you're going to farm, use that one 
if you're farming for gear, you're going to use the gear drop rate one. Now, you're not going to always have infinite amounts of food from what I've found, uh, but you do have a decent amount of food and you want to use it on things relevant to what you're doing. Just note, if you do lose a battle, uh, you lose the food. Uh, so just keep in mind, food is not refunded. So those are the main things. We do also have this one here, which is a sweep button. Once you've uh, max cleared the, the, the stage you're trying to do, you can sweep it, you can do it in times threes and you can just burn stamina super quick. Uh, and this is like a repeat but, uh, battle thing, but you do also have the sweep function that you can uh, do as well if you have sweep tickets. But let's jump into battle and I want to take a look at combat itself and go through the basics of combat. Okay, so here we go, jumping in. And basically... And once again, combat, you can go a lot more in depth, but essentially what we have is we have a basic attack. Everyone has a basic attack, which is this one we're on at the moment. Uh, and this basically has no cooldown. You can use it every turn. It's your basic attack standard to most games. Then we have our first skill, which this one is going to have a timed a turn cooldown. So you use it, you got to wait a certain amount of turns. Then as you can see on my characters here, we do have the energy around them. We've got of eight. Now, if you want to use eight of eight, you can use your ultimate ability and then if you want to use six of eight you can use your team up ability which is going to team them up with the character next to them so in this situation my gosh here uh and my um what's her face my soul they're going to be in a team up now on my current formation i don't use any team up abilities but there are definitely situations in which you will use it uh but in general those are your two options that you can have and i'll just hide my face because we are on lotus you can see that i've got my team up ability selected it's flashing that it's going to use three quarters of his energy which is six of the eight and then if i click on his ultimate it's going to use the eight of the eight then when, when we look at the enemies you can see that you've got great meaning we're going to deal good damage against them uh, and the different color arrows you get is going to indicate whether you have the elemental advantage or not it's all pretty basic stuff but like i said the only um, advanced thing compared to or different thing to other games is that we do have this ultimate system that can also be used in a team up method now you can't spam the team up abilities either so so for instance here, if I go ahead and I use my, uh, dude, I use the basic attack. I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's put the speed up. Also, you do have three times speed and you have auto combat. Uh, but what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to put some basic attacks in so I can show you guys what happens over here. So if I go ahead and use this team up attack, so I go ahead and I use that. Let's do that. Happy days. You can see job done. Enemy's turn. Duh, 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 duh. Uh, you can just use a basic attack for now. And now it's my Ghosh's turn. And you can see, so my Ghosh is in, in the team up with my soul who they just used, but I am unable to use my team up attack straight away again. So just keep that in mind. You can't do back-to-back -back team ups with the same team. So you normally want to have one, if you're using one character that wants to use the team up, the other one probably wants to be using their ultimate. And that is pretty much the basics to combat. You can see our turn order on the right-hand side here. And I think that's pretty much everything that I want to go through for combat. Next, I quickly wanted to talk about the uh, the world map as such. So when you're out here, you do have uh, fishing attempts that you can use. So if we come over this fishing pond, uh, also you do get these random ones where you'll see them around the place where you can explore and you get uh, different goodies. Now there are little achievements that you need to do to do these. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then we have fishing. So you can see I've got six of six uh, on the fish hooks. So you can do some fishing. Just keep in mind this does refresh. It's not super fast, but just jump in and do your fishing every day. Uh, you will get some rewards and stuff like that so you can upgrade your fishing quality i'm not going to do an in-depth thing on fishing you'll figure it out it's fishing the other thing is if you see this king wolf appear uh that's one you want to hit you want to go to it's just going to give you some extra yule so it's going to take you straight to the place you need to go to and it's going to allow you to uh defeat him and you're going to get some extra yule as well which is always if you see that go ahead slap it not too bad so now as we leave the chibi world and we enter the the proper world uh if we go down here you can see just above hideout we've got this uh, map now this can take you to do the different worlds and it can show you the shops uh, and what you can actually purchase from the shops now these shops are really nice you can hit go to the shop and you can just do it from here and you can go ahead and purchase things now when you defeat enemies uh, in that region that's how you're going to get the extra points and you're going to be able to exchange things from the shop but as we look here you can there will be different things different boxes around the world to break and stuff like that that are going to give you extra goodies so just keep an eye out there will be chests stuff like that you can see over here if we 
if we keep going over here, you can see this barrel is available for us to break. So we can go and break the barrel and it gives us a few goodies, but there are other ones around the place. So just keep that in mind. Keep an eye out while exploring, but you can always go to the different vendors as well and buy some stuff from the shops. And just thought I'd show you guys, if you're in the world and you did what I did, where you just detach from your pathing, if we look over here on the left-hand side, just above my head, we can click this shop icon and that will take make you auto path to the shopkeeper and we can jump over here to the region shops. Now, I, I normally buy most of the food ingredients because food ingredients are pretty rare. The other things that I like to buy when I have access to them, you do need to progress a little bit to have access, is the gift box. It's just really easy for that. You can go for the, the, um, the shards for the skill ups as well. But in general, because I, I never buy the boxes though, I never buy the gear boxes because you just always get shafted and it's only R to SSR. There's no LR gear or anything like that. So don't buy those. Uh, but these these are only what it costs you. Uh, so I do like purchasing just the um, the the materials for cooking. Uh, but then like I said, the gift boxes are really nice because like I said, early on, uh, if you unlock the ability to purchase those gift boxes, when we look at our mages and wanting to get that bonding up, the gifts actually give a ton of bond. Uh, which is going to really help you progress through this and unlock your capabilities to get your main characters up to uh, UR and then LR along the way. Now, some other things I want to mention, if you go to your hideout, your hideout has like an AFK loot system, which is really nice. It does give you extra stamina as well. You can see it here. Just come back here every time you log into the game and just collect your income. You will get some stamina. You will get some uh, Yule. You will get some other items as well. Just make sure you're always doing that and don't let that over cap. Now, on top of that, we have the shop. I wanted to quickly touch on the shop we have the general shop here and as you can see daily gifts we get 10 free skip tickets so just keep getting them stock them up now you can buy a stam uh, stamina you can buy arena tickets as well they do get extremely expensive so i never tell people what to do in terms of buying uh stamina and arena tickets because it's a personal uh, it's a personal basis on what you enjoy doing but just know that they are there but if we look at stamina for instance it does go up in cost every time you purchase it now it's 60 it was 30 30, we go again and you can see we're up to 95 so it does get incredibly expensive as you go along but just know that it is there as an option if you want to go ahead and take it uh, and we do have our daily free pack as well which you go ahead and pick up it's going to give you that extra 50 stamina as well the cool thing about it is you don't have to use it straight away and you can store that stamina next up i want to quickly touch on arena now whether you love or hate arena this is kind of a pvp game so hopefully most people enjoy it yes it is going to be pay to win but hey i just enjoy it as long as i can have fun and compete with people and hopefully they bring the real-time arena pretty quick but burn your arena tickets you can see i've got 10 of 10 obviously i haven't logged into this account in ages but with this you do want to use your arena tickets you don't want to let that cap because you will get points which you can then exchange at the arena store on top of that we do have um extra league rewards you can see as you progress through and you go up the leagues you will get extra rewards for each rank that you reach so doing arena is going to be really nice and if you can hit some of those upper leagues uh which if you push really hard at global even as free to play you should be able to get up some of those leagues it will give you a ton of premium currency for summons and stuff like that as well now i want to look at events now you keep track of different events that are ongoing we will get different events but every day you do have the playtime event so as you stay logged in for longer uh each day you will be able to collect all of these extra rewards as well so definitely go ahead and take them as you can see these you can get r to lr gear the lr is a bait i've never had an lr but you know if you get really lucky and you get it nice but you do get some nice resources just from having your game on so even if you're not playing the game actively having it on an emulator or something like that uh and just collecting the uh the time and then just going and collecting these these extra rewards is going to be nice to do every day once again you don't have to actively play the game for that time you just have to have the game open so go ahead and do that and also just pay attention to other events there will be a bunch of events that happened over time so that is going to be it for the beginner's guide. There is a ton more things that I could go more in depth in, but I don't want to over flood this video with too many things for new players who haven't touched the game. So I will be doing more in depth videos uh, before the release. I will talk about rerolls, uh, tier list. We'll go through uh, best beginner teams uh, to speed your way to farming gear, because that's what I really focused on on the Canadian version was the optimizing of the early game. And I will go through a lot of those things in more videos, but this hopefully gets you pointed in the right direction so you don't feel completely lost in the game as always guys thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i'll look forward to seeing the next one cheers